our rights. And then you got this fraud going on with hundreds of thousands of people, A millions, month. when you add them up, flooding over the border that they can't stop, don't even know who they are, and they keep coming in. So how come that's not being brought So out? what is the method of the madness? I mean, what is the plan? Because they're following the exact same plan in Europe, too. I mean, this is a plan. Well, the plan is, again, you know, it's when things break down, that's their excuse, as you were pointing out, to have that EU army to keep you in check. So when things break down, then they come out again and say, we got to protect you. We got to stop this from happening. It'll never happen again. So that's what they do. They create the violent situations, sure. and then they cover it up by saying, we're not going to let this happen again. Yeah, but you created it. And yeah, because we we've had the death it. of common sense, they never get held accountable that, I mean, used to, they do something five years before and then pretend to say it was five years later. Now they do it one month, block the FBI from actually stopping real terrorists, but then take more of our rights after the terrorist attack who they allowed to come in. I mean, it's just crazy. Yeah, and, and then again, when you look at the entire picture, when you talk about terrorism, you know, if I was born in Iraq or Yemen or Libya or Syria or Afghanistan and a foreign country came in and bombed my whole country into ruins, killed everybody that I love, and I'm a young kid, my parents are dead, my aunts and uncles, everybody, my friends, I have no future. Uh, you think I'd be radicalized? You think I'd want to blow the brains out of the people that blew the brains out of the people that I loved? And then they say, we got to stop this terrorism ha from happening. You created it. And they're creating this situation. Look, go back to the Great Depression. When the Great Depression came about, they stopped immigration from coming into this country. You couldn't come into the country after World War II. I had relatives from Italy that couldn't come over. They had quotas. They stopped it to stabilize the nation after the Great Depression because the people here didn't have jobs. We certainly weren't going to bring others in. So this isn't about Mexicans or Muslims. It's about common sense. And the common sense is if your house is full, you can't get any more people in the doors, you ran out of food, you're going to bring more in? So that is the issue. But going back to the whole immigration issue, by the way, and I've been writing about this since the mid-'80s, it was the National Association of Manufacturers when we had manufacturers, and then later on, Silicon Valley, the con men out there. Yeah, they want to drive wages down, to... even though it ultimately will destroy their own market. Yeah, they brought in all the cheap labor. That's what they wanted, and they got it. And now our whole standard of living has declined. And that's what, the, that's what the Brexit vote was about. You look at the facts, it's the data not making it up. Major issues were the migrants coming in, coming in from Romania and Poland, cheaper labor, putting the people out of work. And the second thing is they didn't want to lose their nationality. And how dare you don't want to lose your nationality? You should become vanilla. EU will put you in a vanilla package and you, how dare you want to maintain your ancestral heritage? That's what the vote was really about. And the people had enough of it. Oh, and there's this other great con going on. Now they want to do another vote. What do you mean you want to do another vote? You lost the other one. Oh, no. But we don't like losing because we're the establishment. Could you imagine if that vote went the other way and they voted to remain and the people that wanted to leave called for another vote? They would be laughing at them. But as you call them and I call them, the prostitutes and media whores, no, no, because the establishment wanted to remain even Obama went over there, and if you're going to get bad in the back of the queue, if you leave, Abe went over there. They're all the Jamie Diamonds, the white shoe boys, all telling them to stay, and they left. Now they want a new vote, and they're actually trying to make this legitimate. Oh, you lost the ball? And we predicted they do that because, listen, France and others voted to leave in 2005, and they just said, sorry, can't. So, so we've already seen the EU, as people try to get out of it, become more dictatorial and i just can't believe they're actually saying we're creating a new army and it's going to take over your army so you can't leave i mean this is we haven't seen stuff like this since hitler and it's got all these weird leftist groups promoting it what is this weird because you know i'm not right wing or left wing you're not either you're like a political atheist i'm just into liberty uh, what is this new love affair that the left has with radical islam and with totalitarianism because i mean we attack bush for what he did but my gosh the left worldwide seems like they have gone stark raving mad that's one question. A, then B, Gerald Salente, top trend forecaster. I want to ask you this question.
I know you write about it at trendsresearch.com. You wrote decades ago about when the meltdown happens worldwide, the third world first, they will flood the borders, and then that could completely swamp civilization. Well, even a new FEMA report has come out uh, dealing with 395% food spikes being a possibility uh, starting next year and then running through the next decade. So that's over a decade, folks. It's not in one year, but it's still ultra-massive. And they talk in the report about the crisis causing a global collapse from crop failure to system failure. Well, they've got, as you wrote about five, six years ago with Arab Spring, they manipulated the, 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 the prices in North Africa knowing that when prices go about 50% of your paycheck going to food, that causes civil unrest. So they're manipulating civil unrest and posing as the savior, so it's pretty clear. They're orchestrating global meltdown to get more control, but it got so bad, they were so arrogant, the EU was meant to collapse financially, and then a super state was meant to come out of that, holding them hostage. I mean, that's what Davos admitted. Instead, the member states see it coming because you and others and UKIP are informing them. Drudge is informing them. Others are informing them. And so the people are informed. They're pulling out beforehand. The global government project is in deep trouble. Now, that's a lot, but please tackle it. Yes, the global government is in deep trouble. The central banks have failed. They've run out of, they don't have any weapons left. Look, a, a, a study just came out by the United Nations, as you know, last week. This is the greatest migrant refugee crisis in world history, bigger than World War II. It's just begun. All of the 65 million people have fleed. It's bigger than World War II. Now, let's just do the numbers. Back in World War II, there were 2.3 billion people on the planet. We now have added 5 billion people since. Now, let's go around the world. Hey, how about Nigeria? Oh, yeah, the biggest country in Africa. What, 147 million people? There's more than that now. Yeah, and the economy's collapsed. Oil prices collapsed. They're leaving. There's a revolution going on. Go to Venezuela, take a trip to Brazil. Go around the world, Ghana, South Africa, Zambia. Name the country, name the place. Greece, Italy, Spain, Portugal, the U.K., everything's unraveling. Uh, right here in the U.S. with Cook numbers, we have a 1.8% growth rate. That's a depression. So that's what I'm saying. The whole thing is collapsing. Now let's go back to the Orlando, what happened there a few weeks ago. So one guy ostensibly goes nuts, and it's a big issue. Let's stop this from happening again by robbing us of our Second Amendment rights, as if that would have anything to do to stop anything. I'm making that point because when the next explosive element hits, they're going to use it as an excuse to take more of our rights away That's right. and to keep us down, quiet, and put in place. So the big trend, as you've been saying, is they're coming after the guns, they're coming after the private property, they're, they're coming after the cash, they're coming after the farmer's markets, they're coming after true sustainability. The good news is I'm seeing more and more local police departments and, and governments start to actually figure this out and openly realize that the federal government's run by a bunch of, a bunch of multinational criminals who plan to absolutely bring us to our knees. That's what, the, uh, that's what the Brexit vote was about. It's no different whether it's the European Central, the, the, uh, the EU, or, or Washington. You know, it's, it's this, these, it's a, mo I mean, what, what do you got? A bunch of clowns over there, a, a chorus of what, 536 congressmen and senators telling 320 million people how to tie their shoes? I mean, who made this stuff up? So it's no different. So, yeah, I mean, this is, you know, 1778, you know, I mean, come on. It's a whole different world right now. We don't need these people to run our lives. And by the way, what's going on now with the Brexit, I want to read this to you. This was, this was eight days. It was our trend alert, which I'm sure you guys got, 10 days before the Brexit vote. On a broader socioeconomic and political scale, with anti-immigration and anti-EU populism movements rapidly spreading throughout Europe, should British citizens vote to exit, we forecast similar direct democracy referendums igniting across the continent to leave the EU, swiftly leading to the dissolution of Brussels' central government control, elimination of the euro, and a return to national currencies. The war has begun. That's right. And now, within two days of it happening, we're now five days in, Eight countries have lined up, and the polls show they're going to exit. I just got chills, Gerald. And the EU unelected bureaucracy announced, we are ready to take your military over. You can't leave. That is so sensational. So, so give us your forecast. What do you expect the arrogant bureaucrats in their own la-la land to do next? They will fight and do anything they can to remain in power and rob us of our rights. 
They will start wars. They will enslave their own people, rob us of more of our rights. They'll start race they wars? Everything. You name it, they're going to do it. They will do anything to remain in control. And again, you know, GC's three G's, guns, gold, and a getaway plan. You know, you never know what's going to happen. And you see what's going on with gold. And if you well know, we've been forecasting this, you know, as you have. Oh, yeah, the elites yeah. have been hoarding it while telling us not to get it. That's why I didn't sell any of my gold and bought more. And I told listeners, right. I don't know what's going to happen, but my gut tells me it's going to go up over time, which is starting to do. Let me ask you this then. We see FEMA internal reports getting leaked where they think 395% food price increases is what they're wargaming in the next decade. Now, that's year by year, but that's still ultra-massive, as you know. Just 10 20% a year will cause, you know, riots worldwide. And, they're, and they talk about civil unrest, collapse of society, while they stockpile weapons and guns. Uh, what do you think they think is going to happen? I mean, are they going to trigger an implosion, or has the implosion already begun, and they just think they're going to ride it to power? They can't stop it. It's the central banks have failed. They have negative interest rate policies. Negative, what, 40% of the bonds being sold? You, you, buy, you buy the bond, and when you cash it in, you get less money, and you can't make this stuff up. Negative yields, the white shoe boys call. And then meanwhile, I predict that you will see the mainstream media admit it's gone bankrupt, and basically even the, the facades will be taken down now because they literally have 6% trust rates in polls. They have no viewers or readers uh, anymore. I predict in the next year you're going to see massive media collapse, more than you've seen the last 10 years combined, Gerald. Uh, you can stick a fork in them. You can see them only intensifying their lying, and it's not working. What do you think about my prediction? Well, I, I think you're right to an extent, but they still have a lot of power because it's the mass media. And so the, the she, all right, we're talking about Brexit, for example. Two days before the Brexit vote, only 26 percent of Americans even knew about it. And so what I'm saying is they're lying by omission. Yeah, yeah. So so what I'm saying is they still have a lot of power, even at that low level, because they'll put out the main message. But of course, they're losing it. And and. People like yourself and myself. No, and I get it. They can still unify and push a fraud, but the frauds deteriorate in a few days now. It used to take years to expose them. Exactly. Now, the other issue, what you were saying about the price of food, it's not that the prices are going to go up. It's the value of the currencies are going to decline. Exactly. So that's what we're looking at. We're so they're spinning it. It's not that food's going up. It's the money's going to devalue. You got it. So it's not a supply and demand issue.